Welcome into AZ Audibles. I'm Claudia Collins with Zach Alvira and Eric Sorensen. We're really excited about this week because it's rivalry week. At least that's what we're going to call it. This upcoming week, we've got Hamilton versus Chandler. And we're wondering, is this the year that Hamilton brings down Chandler? Eric, do you think this is the year? Well, I'm not going to make any predictions, guys. Sorry, I'm just going to hit it straight down the fairway. I, I definitely think this is Hamilton's best chance of beating Chandler. But as we've talked about in the past, until someone slays the big bad dragon, they're still the king of the mountain. I think this year, one of the things to focus on is Hamilton has the edge at quarterback. And in the past, that's not to take anything away from what Chandler has. But the way Nico Marchio is playing right now, 32 touchdowns, one interception, maybe that's the X factor. And I also think it's unique to look at Chandler the last couple of weeks. They've really been tested. On the opposite side, Hamilton has just been rolling teams. My last point is this. Okay, this is a huge rivalry. Next week, both teams in the open are going to face less competition than they're going to face this week. So are the head coaches going to hold back a little bit, knowing maybe down the line it's going to be Chandler Hamilton again for the Open Championship? Knowing those two head coaches, I would think they wouldn't. But I think that's something that definitely goes into the strategy going into Friday. All right, I'll give you my take. Plain and simple, I do think it's the year that Hamilton is going to beat Chandler. Okay. I just think that, yes, Chandler's on a 45-game win streak. They've got a really deep and talented roster. But when I look at those games against Highland and Castile, it makes me wonder if, you know, this Hamilton's going to be the most challenging team that they've played all season. That's a given. But just kind of skating by Castile kind of worries me for Chandler a little bit. And Eric, you previously mentioned when we've talked about Chandler Hamilton in the past, Hamilton's going to need to use their timeout strategically. There's things that they're going to have to do to come out on top. Uh, the cool thing about this game, just, you know, game aside, I do think Hamilton's going to win, but there's going to be 25 to 30 D1 players on the field. So if there's anything we know for sure, it's going to be a fun matchup. And we're probably going to see them on December 11th in the Open Division Championship game. Zach, what do you think? You know, I'm not going to give a prediction either, but I will say that there are a lot of people who are worried about Chandler's slow starts, especially in the first half against a lot of those teams that you mentioned, Claudia. But, you know, the thing with Castile is Castile has lost to Chandler and Hamilton by a combined 14 points. So the Colts, I think, are much better than a lot of people are giving them credit for. And, you know, let's be honest, it's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. Most of the time, teams play their best game against their rival, I'm not worried about Chandler necessarily, although Hamilton obviously is a very, very good football program. I think what we're going to see are two very rightfully deserving nationally ranked teams going at each other. And I mean, I think we're just all in for a treat Friday. Whoever wins will obviously be the number one seed in the open division. And like you guys already said, we'll probably see them match up again later on. Well, guys, I want to circle back to that game that Hamilton played against Bishop Gorman. For the record, their record is 10 and 1 at Bishop Gorman, which means their only loss was to Hamilton. What do you think that says about what Hamilton can do the rest of the season? Yeah, if I was Huskies head coach Mike Zadevsky, I'd just put that that Bishop Gorman tape on this week and just let the kids watch it and let it soak in again because it's going to take that type of effort to beat this Chandler team. I mean, no love lost between these two programs. And I, I think, you know, this could be Hamilton's year. It actually probably should be Hamilton's year. But again, the Wolves are at the top for a reason. And until someone beats them, 45 straight wins, as you mentioned, Claudia, against in-state opponents, it's going to be a heck of a game on Friday. You know, and just to piggyback off of that, Bishop Gorman's defense was obviously one of the top in the country. But Chandler's right up there as well. I would actually argue that Chandler's defense is a little bit better. You know, you have Isaiah Johnson, you have Jacob Holmes, you have, you know, Amari Washington, who has been getting offers left and right from major Division One programs all across the country. That defensive line for Chandler is what really makes that unit go. And then you add Frankie Morales along with Travis Robertson, you know, in the secondary. That's a very good defense. And, I mean, it's going to be a challenge for any team, as obviously has been showcased this season, even when teams start to kind of put points up in the first half. So, you know, that Hamilton versus Bishop Gorman game, I agree, Eric, it should be on repeat in that locker room for the Huskies this week. But at the same time, 
I think you have to go back and, and look at all the previous years. The championship last year where Hamilton was literally a field goal away from beating Chandler. It's moments like that that I think are going to resonate a little bit more with this team heading into this game this week. All right, Zach, this one's pretty much all for you. The Ahwatukee expert has the Ahwatukee Bowl this week, and it's Desert Vista and Mountain Point. And what do you think the outcome of that game might be? Or what are you expecting to see on the field? Yeah, you're not getting a prediction from me on this game. I would be basically exiled from whatever school I do not pick. Uh, What you're going to see is two very much improved teams. Uh, We obviously know Mountain Point has a ton of speed at wide out. They have a ton of speed on that secondary. That's kind of been their bread and butter, except in the last maybe few weeks or so where all three of their running backs, Devin Sparks, Amir Williams, and Jalen Rushing have really taken off. This is a Mountain Point offense that went from basically winless last year, except for the Tukey Bowl, to one of the top in the state as far as term and in terms of yards per game, um, even points scored at one point, they were pretty high up there. I mean, we saw them beat the likes of Brophy and kind of hang around with Basha there for the first half as well. On the other side of things, Desert Vista, a very young team still. Braxton Thomas is only a sophomore quarterback. He's going to split time with Jackson Akins, who's only a junior. Christian Clark has really kind of come into his own, even though he's only a sophomore at running back with Devin Grubbs out. Now, the, the question that I even have, and I don't even know the answer to yet, is whether Devin Grubbs are, will play or not. He got hurt against Highland, I believe, week four it was, with a shoulder injury, got surgery, and he's basically been on track to return. So whether that's this week or they hold him out for the playoffs, which I do think both teams are in at this point, will will be really interesting because that might change the dynamic of this game a little bit. Going back to the playoffs, I think both teams are in, like I just said. This game comes down to playoff seeding, in my opinion, which obviously makes it really fun because the last couple of years, the Tukey Bulls have kind of been – you know, one of those like, oh, it's just the neighborhood rivalry kind of thing. I talked to both athletic directors at the schools. They both believe this is kind of a way to reset the Tukey Bowl, make it fun again, make it interesting, have a ton of fans there again. And it's the 25th anniversary and they're tied 12-12 in the series. I'm excited to see who's going to get that little edge there this week. I think Zach hit the nail on the head. I I look at this from a big picture view and I see relevance. I see relevance with both programs. Eric Lauer has done a tremendous job at Mountain Point and Ty Wisdom, I mean, his resume speaks for itself. You look at what he did at Horizon and what Horizon is doing now basically with his players. I'm happy to see this game have meaning again. And I think it is sort of a rebirth of a great rivalry. And I don't think guys, you will see a bigger community rivalry in the Valley than what happens in the two people. Well, we've got two exciting rivalries coming up this week. If you want more AZ audibles, you can head to sports360az.com. 